Hi guys, it's Matt here from Max on UK, and in this tutorial video, we are going to be taking a quick look at Cinema 4D's fur function. So let's create ourselves an object to put some fur on. I'm just going to use a plane here because it's nice and sort of big and flat, and you can see what's happening. And then I'm going to create some fur, and that's really easy to do by just going to simulate hair objects and add fur. And there you go, instantly we can see that we've got these guides. So these are only sort of a rough indication, there you go, of where the hairs are going to be. So I've got 10,000 hairs on there at the moment, and my editor level of detail is only a 10% of that. So it doesn't show every single hair that, or fur strand that will be created, at least it doesn't, it doesn't at the moment. Um, then you can turn that to 10%. It just means that the um, editor is a little bit quicker. You can increase and decrease the amount of uh, hair numbers that there are simply by you know, just changing the number there, the number of segments that there are in the hairs, which we shall get to a bit later, the length, and then you can increase the variation. So you can you know, see very quickly that you can vary the length of that fur in no time whatsoever. So maybe if I just shrink that down and uh, lower the variance there, so there's a, you know, like a three or four centimeter variants. There you go, and it creates some fur quite quickly. No problem whatsoever. That's largely all the fur object itself can do. You have got the ability of using these combs here, and they are useful um, for creating vertex maps, or using vertex maps. So in order to create a vertex map, I need to make my plane editable. Okay, make sure I'm on points mode. And then go up to your character and then go to the paint tool. And then what you can do is you can paint some sort of areas on there that maybe you want to go in one direction. I'm going to make it nice and square so we can see. And then I'm just going to um, hold down control and get rid of some that I don't want. There we go. And then under your fur object, you've got some comb X, Y, and Z. And if I just drag and drop that into there, and then render, you can see that the fur is you know, changing direction. If I just go back to your vertex weight map, you can you know, change the percentages of that. So if you wanted it to be a little bit you know, more gradiated, then it's really easy to do. You can just sort of work your way around. Um, maybe I'll go that way or that way. And you know, you can you can play with those, and you can see that the the guides respond really quite quickly. So if you've only got like a fifty percent map there, and I'm working that way, maybe then that I want eighty four, and then that last little bit up there to be a hundred percent, and then render. You can see that we've got control over that direction, and you can create multiple tags, if I just deselect that, go back to the plane and paint again, I have a secondary tag and then I can drag and drop that maybe into the other one. There you go, you can see we've got some ways of controlling directions of fur using vertex maps. I should just get rid of those for the moment. The rest of the information about controlling the look of this fur is all done through the hair material here, Okay, and that's quite a lengthy thing. Um, so let's have a nosy of it then. So we've got a variety of different options that we can choose. Color being, you know, one of the obvious ones. Um, hair used to get an awful, used an awful lot for making grass. So if I just um, lighten that up and then render, you can see. Oh, that's a bit luminant. Um, you can see that it was really useful for doing lawns and things like that which is you know it's not too bad um, and then we've got a whole load of options here which I'll go through in another tutorial but this was just a quick nip into how to make fur and I will catch you in the next video